I'd like to bring to order the meeting of the Green Bay Sexu Sexual, Offender Sexual Offenders Residency Board uh, for uh, February 20th, 2018. Um, members here today are myself, um, Melissa, and, and um, Ed as our alternate. So um, we'll start with approving um, minutes from the previous uh, board meeting. Um, can I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. So were you manually doing this? Uh, oh, sorry, you didn't see I, over there. Okay, I'd like to uh, start with the first appeal of uh, the agenda. Oh, oh, okay. Um, could I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Okay, the first uh, appeal is for Todd Dupas. Is Todd here? Yes, right here. Just have a seat right there, Todd. Right here? Yep. <coughs> Sorry you're so far away. Excellent. So, Todd, you just in case come up here. Okay, Todd, why don't we start off with uh, tell, telling us a little bit um, about what happened and why you were convicted of your crime. Uh, I was introduced to a 15-year-old to a, to a at the time in 2011 from a, her mother. I used to work with her like 20 years before that. And uh, how this all came about was she was looking for a cook. And she, my son was a cook, and she came to my house out of the blue, and I, I didn't even recognize her. And uh, anyway, I gave her my son's info, blah, 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 and then uh, she uh, introduced me to her daughter, because her daughter liked to go fishing, and I fished. And uh, I ended up spending time with her daughter fishing for about a year, year and a half almost, about a year. And uh, we became good friends, and uh, one thing led to another, and I kind of, I kind of took advantage of the situation, uh, and we ended up having sex in 2012 in July. So you knew her for about a year. A little over a year, about a year, yeah, a little over a year. And uh, she was 16 at the time. We had sex two times within uh, within a two week period, maybe less than two weeks. I'm trying to remember this exactly how it went. And the second time we had sex, we, I, I decided we should make a video. We, we, we taped it. And then I, and I kept it. And, and then after that, she had moved to Texas. And uh, she was gone a couple weeks. A couple weeks later, my son usually stays in my house when he used to fight with his girlfriend. And he was there looking for a pair of shorts. And this DVD was in the bottom drawer under some shorts, <laughs> just, you know. And he found it and put it in my daughter's PlayStation and saw what it was and turned into police and that's how this all came about. Uh, I was 
driving at the time, I was out of Chicago, and they called me, and I came in the police station the next morning when I got back, and they told me the whole story. They told me exactly. There was some confusion about how many times this had happened, but I, I ain't making no excuses. I was tired, just like I am today, obviously. And they got in late this morning, but uh, I was totally responsible for this. Uh, I made a bad choice. <laughs> I don't make a lot of bad choices in my life, sir, but uh, at that time, 2012, I think it was July 10th, if I remember, when it all came about to so, light. So you, you, you uh, pleaded guilty <coughs> to the crime, correct? Sir. Did you plead guilty to it? I pleaded no contest. Okay. We took a plea deal, I guess, is what it came out to. And how old were you at the time? At the time, I would have been 57. 64 now. So what what was going through your mind? I mean, obviously you knew that the girl was underage. Well. Not to mention doing the video. I don't like, I don't want to make excuses on this whole thing. I would, it was, uh, I had a year before, before I ever met her, I had broken up with a girl that, you know, I went out for a long time with her. I took care of her, so then I ended up going up with a 26 year old girl. And she basically, you know, being a fool, she was just using it for money. I just had a sour taste with women at the time, I guess, and, and I didn't look at it as, I knew she was 16, I guess I just didn't care. And it, it, uh, the opportunity presented itself, and I made the choice to do that. Uh, and how long have you been out? I got out of June 18th of 2018, sir. Okay, and where you been staying prior to this? I've been in uh, three different motels in Green Bay. Well, one out, one out in uh, Dykesville, two in Green Bay, and now I'm living at the Arena Motel. I've been living there for three months. I've been in a motel since I got out besides the TLP when I first got out. Okay, and you're currently employed? Well, yes, sir. I just started working two weeks after I got out. Okay. I took out the same job back that I had before I went in. They, they were nice enough to give me a second chance. And I've been there since, I would say July, what was it, July, second week of July, last year, started back, something like that. And um, who are you intending to live with? This is myself, sir. I don't, I've lived alone for all the years that when I got, when I was divorced back 30 well, some years ago, I lived alone ever since. Okay. I've never lived with anybody. All right. Um, if we want to talk about your trooper, treatment program, you have read to do that in either in public <coughs> or private session. Right. We're here Fine. Fine. Okay. I have nothing to hide. So you said uh, here that you uh, were in SO2, correct? Yes, I took SO2. I read graduate corrections, which we should serve for. Do you have a certificate? Yes, sir. I have all my certificates here. Can I? Can you bring up? Yes, sir. Please, real quick. <coughs> oh. They're they're all there. They're certificates. Okay. For the record, uh, he had given us information in regards to his uh, certificates. see um, the SO2 certificate. It's in there, sir. Is it? I know it's in there for sure. It's a white one, sir. It's a white certificate, I believe. Okay, I see it. Okay, I got it. All right. Do you want to take a look at these? No, that's fine. Okay. Uh, is there any questions anybody else has? I do <coughs> have a few questions. It's your community ties and your support. You list your brother, Steve. Where does he live? He lives in uh, Oaton Styles, by the street floors. Okay. About, okay. And your daughter? My daughter, Monique. So she's, I used to be my daughter's guardian. She's down in the She's in a group home. She's like, in a group home. I spend every weekend there, basically. Okay. I wasn't sure if when you, in the paperwork whether it was a group home, home that she owned. No, no? ma'am. She's, she's, she's one of the... Residents. Residents that live there. There's three other adults that live there too. Okay, and 
What about your son? My son lives in Alabama. Okay. So do you have any uh, relatives or family members, um, close family members or friends that live in the city? Friends, uh, I just have acquaintance I work with, ma'am. Any friends I've had in the past uh, kind of just turned away. You know, I don't blame it. Uh, I have the people, Paulette, my daughter's, she runs a group where I spend, I know those, all those people there. I consider them all friends. In fact, there's a lady there we go through, I do this homework for my, my PO. It's about anger, and it's a pamphlet, and she kind of helps me out with it. So yeah, they're all friends of mine now. But I don't, I don't, I don't go nowhere. I don't socialize. So, so I'm pretty much a homebody, or I'm working, or I'm sleeping, or I'm with my daughter. Uh, otherwise, uh, I have no friends outside of, you know, close friends like that. I guess what my concern is this: What led you to um, spend so much time with this, the young woman, young girl who was victimized? Because I guess. Well, <coughs> she's her her family her mother and father divorced. Her father has nothing to do with her. It started off. I, I was I was a friend, and I and I and I and I should have stayed a friend. I, I did more harm than good by not remaining just a friend. And I and and, and I and I just she just hung out at my house with my daughter and me, or we went fishing, and I mean she was just a she was a nice person. She was smart. She liked fishing. I mean. Nothing came about until a year after, and I, I, I just liked hanging out with her because I had, like I didn't have a lot of friends back then anyway. I mean, just the people I worked with, I would I hang out with those guys after work. Uh, and my son, we spent a lot of time together back then, and my daughter, of course. But we were man, we were friends basically, and I let it get out of hand. You know? So, so what did you learn from your SO two training in regards to you know how? How this relationship well, started and, and why it was wrong? Well, I think I knew it was wrong at the time already, of course. But what I learned from SO2 when I was in Red Granite was when I first started SO2, I was all about blaming everybody else. Blaming everybody else. I didn't take responsibility. What we you don't know, feel the source of myself, basically, I guess. And they talked, well, we had a group of 20 guys in there in a circle, and they, they set me straight in a hurry. They've, they've been in programs like this before. I've never been in one, so. And, and I come to realize, between that and the Bible study course I took, I didn't, I didn't wanna, I was angry back then. And uh, I never, I never, I let people, I would let people control my, my reactions. And I learned a lot through, through, through the group there, at SO2 and Red Grant, and the aftercare I'm in now that you, you, you can't let people get to you like that. And through a Bible study, you learn how to be meek. You don't let, you don't let people make you react. I did that uh, five years in prison. I never had a ticket con report. So I, people would say a lot of things, you know, that would set me off back in the day. But I don't, I'm not like that no more. I mean, I learned how to. Where are you in aftercare? I'm over at Attic Man, over in the corner of, of uh, Dow Smith, I mean, Webster and and Walnut there at that building. I have one more session to go. She wrote me a, a thing for the board. And t it's actually in my car. Sorry, I forgot to bring it in. Well, back with my the lady that does a group. Are you going to continue with that? Any other? Oh, program? I like going. No, I would if she wants me to. Yes, ma'am. She's recommended I be released. My PO told me this, and but I would I wouldn't mind staying there because you know you get a lot out of it as far as everyday life, as far as what sets you off and how you would handle it, so on and so on. It's up to Rebecca though. I don't know if she'll let me stay there any longer or not. Okay, any other questions for him? No, I don't have any. Anybody want to make a motion in regards to his appeal? I will. I'll make a motion to approve his appeal. Address specific? Address specific, yes, to uh, 1116 Stewart Street? Yes, sir. Seconded. Is that a, a apartment number? There's four apartments in a house. It's a house. There's four apartments in there. We all got different addresses, each apartment. Okay. okay. 14, 15, 16, and 17, I believe. All right. All right, we have a, a motion to approve him address specific to this location. Second. And seconded. Motion 
passes unanimously. All right, sir, you've been approved to, to move to this location. Do you want it sent to that location? Yes, sir. All right, we'll send uh, the information there. Good luck to you, and you can have your information back. Thank you very much. I won't let you <coughs> I won't let you Thank you. All right, Mr. Richard Kramer. Great. Okay, Mr. Kramer, we're here to hear your appeal to 1320 Day Street. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Um, we're going to ask you to talk a little bit about uh, your um, your conviction. Just make sure you don't uh, uh, talk to or say a, a, a specific name. Just refer to it as the victim. So tell us what uh, your convictions were and, and how you came to light uh, what you were doing in terms of the child pornography. My convictions. My conviction was. Um, possession of child pornography. I had 150, it's 150 plus pictures plus a movie. Um, I did the P, B, uh, P to P personal, um, person to person transfer protocols on the computer. Looked up anything I thought eight year old, nine year old, looked at them, downloaded what I liked as, as, as in my profile, which I, look, I, I looked at. Um, I was doing that after my wife left me, took the kid. It, it, it was a big stress. In my, in, my, in my eyes, it was a stress reliever. I knew what was wrong. I'd take full responsibility of my actions. Um, and right now, I'm going, I'm 15 weeks into SO4 treatment. Okay. How did it come to light uh, that you had this uh, pornography? Um, conviction. I am working on the addiction of regular adult pornography with um, in my SO4 treatment and I believe that's where it spiked the interest of looking at adult pornography and wondering what else was up on this internet. No, my, my question okay. related to is how, how did the police come to, to oh, know I'm that sorry. you were doing this? Um, what I what I heard in the conviction was uh, there was a there is a, an officer somewhere in like Eau Claire or something that it, it, all his job was was to view data transfer, and what the, what the <coughs> investigation came of um, red flaggings of the I, my IP protocol, and um, what he looks for is certain search engine words, if you want to use that, um, like little girl, seven-year-old, and he would red flag that. And that's what I figure that that's how they got me. And then th what they would do is look up the IP address and saw that it was <coughs> and then investigate it. Okay. And how old were you at the time of your conviction? 39. And you did a total of six years? I did six years in racing, Sturdivant, RCI. Okay. And during that, that six years, did you have any, any SO training? I had nine months of it, which I dropped. I felt it wasn't going how I liked it, to, how I was thinking it was going to go. And I decided to drop that. Um, I'm right now, like I said, in, tr in treatment right now, which I feel at the time I don't think I was ready. I am ready now, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm I'm learning a lot about my deviant thinkings and risk factors and offense cycles and all that. That's what we're into right now: sexual history, sexual cr chronology that we're going through, and it's it's really making me. The big thing I'm I'm getting out of this treatment is how many people I've hurt, and I don't want to do that anymore. I really do not want to do that anymore. So, how often do you meet? Once a week on Mondays. Once a week on Mondays, is it, and it's a group session? Yes, we have like eight guys in there. Um, Marshall Kirkpatrick, if anybody knows him. He's out of Appleton, I guess. We, that's where we have to go until he gets a, um, a group going up here. That's where um, I go down. Okay, and are you currently employed? Yes, okay. I'm at American Foods here over on um, University. Um, I've been out of prison since July 17th, and within a month I had that job. So where have you been staying? 
Um, I've been stay I, first three months I was at the TLP on um, the attic on Shawano Avenue. I'm staying with with my buddy Josh back here, and I have some sheets here from my other buddy who I stayed with for two days. I've been I've been homeless right now for about four months, October until now, and I've been staying with Josh and once or twice at a Motel 6, once in a Blue Moon when I want to get away from everything and just just go in there for the night after work. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions for him? <coughs> cool. I have a question for you. You listed a um, group of people as their community ties and your support. Mm -hmm. How, okay, with regard to um, your brother, where does he live? He lives with my mother and father, uh, my mother and stepfather in Bellevue. Okay, and your, other than your uh, immediate family members who you've got listed, mm -hmm. the other individuals, where do they live? Do they live locally? Yes, Green Bay Joshua, <coughs> purple back here, lives in on Green Bay, Western Avenue. That's where I've been staying a little bit more than um, with Jim, my my buddy Jim, who I have sheets here, um, he lives in Alloway, which I stayed with him a couple of nights, and just recently, since they've all started working day shifts, I stay more at the motel. My mother and father, that's 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 a that's a, a rocky rocky subject because I haven't gotten to really talk to mom yet. Dad, my my real dad is in Kenosha, and that's I'm working on starting to write to him in rekindle something there um the other support is my group members we are we are supposed to contact three of our group members a week and I do just to see how they're doing with their group and they they also contact me on how we're doing how I'm doing outside of your group members how many of the people that you've spoken about know about your conviction and your sex offender status everyone All even my brother my brother is, <coughs> I, I would consider I don't I don't like using the word mentally retarded I like to use the word challenged and he knows about it too he's even came up when I was incarcerated jail and seen me so he knows a lot about it Joshua we talk every day if not multiple times a day about what's going on and how I'm getting through the day and some of the some of some of my um, risks and um, risk and yeah, this happened and this I keep I keep Joshua posted Jim to my other friend do you um do you have anything from your existing um, group leader in terms of how you've been doing? Do you have any documentation of that? No, I do not. Okay. I, I should have. I, I wasn't thinking. I was. I had um, <coughs> polygraph on Monday, and that's where my mind was at. With are you, are you currently on on a, on a bracelet? Yes, I am. And how long do you have to be on a bracelet? I guess for the rest of my life. Okay. How is it that you know uh, the, the folks, uh, besides Mr. Perkle, who you lived with, uh, the folks that you've listed as, as friends here? How? Same. How is it that you know those folks? Um, the just folks acquaintances. My, but my friend Jim, I've known for 35 years. I used to go to the Boys and Girls Club when I was younger, and that's where I met him. Um, my brother, my brother. Um, <coughs> the, the guys from group, I just met when I started 15, uh, 15 weeks ago. All right, any more questions for him? No, but if somebody's Should we reject to speak on behalf of him? Um, I can. Uh, we would Could be I have the your, potential. Your, your name? Yep, Brooke Edis with McLean Properties. Okay, thank We'd you. We'd be the potential landlords on right. A Street. Um, so this would be address specific. Uh, that unit is a lower, there is no children in the building. Um, actually, there's no children, even remotely children around there. Um, they're all adults. So okay. um, we've known Richard now for two or so months um, and he was very open and honest right off the bat um, he's been denied by lots of landlords prior so I think he was just tired of being denied but he laid it all, all out on the table right away so we appreciated that um, he was able to go above and beyond even you know we asked some questions and he answered honestly and I followed up with um, Pio, was it Grabowski? Yes. Grabowski. Um, so Kyle, and we are working hand in hand trying to get him approved. Um, but we went through the case, very detailed case, so we do know the, the entire thing. Um, 
and since then we've been in pretty pretty good mm -hmm. contact as well um, any other questions that we would have come up um, he's always been very open to answer um, and I, I, I would say that we are also a very good support system if he needs that um, both me and my husband actually um, we do have other tenants that are offenders that I've sat in front of you guys before so um, this is anything new to us um, it, we don't get anything out of it other than giving somebody a second chance so okay is is your current PO approved this location? Yes. They have. Okay. <coughs> All right. Is anybody else want to speak on his behalf? Okay. Does anybody want to make a motion? I will. I've got to find the address for you. Thank you. I'll move that we approve. Uh, uh, is an appeal to uh, move to 1320 Day Street. Address specific? Address specific, 1320 Day Street, yes. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a second, so we'll vote on this. <coughs> Motion passes two to one. Okay, sir, you've been approved to 1320 Day Street. Uh, address specific, do you want that sent to that particular location? Please. Okay, good luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, David Bellinger. Uh, James David? James. Yes, James. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, not a problem. Bellinger, you're looking to move to 1003 Wilson Avenue? Yep. Okay. And it looks like you're planning to live with someone that's over 60? Yes, my grandparents. Okay. All right, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your conviction and how it came to be that, uh, that it was known? And just make sure, again, you just refer to the person as the victim. No problem. Uh, I was convicted of a second degree sexual assault of the child. I had sexual intercourse with a 15 year old. Um, met her through like a random friend, hung out one time, we slept together. I didn't talk to her probably about two weeks and then I got arrested for burglaries which was all about the same time. And when I got questioned by the cops they brought everything up. I didn't know her actual age, I thought she was 17. Um, doesn't make it any better, but yeah. I did this sleeping with her from the start. Still sleeping with her, it, it happened. How old were you at the time? I was 20. Okay. <coughs> so how did you plead in the case? Uh, no context per the plea agreement. Okay. Everything was kind of wrapped up together. And when were you released? Uh, May 2017. And where you been living prior to this? Uh, I was living with the mother of my child until the early ship went rocky and then I've been basically jumping around from family members and friends for the last couple weeks. And where was she living? Or where was she from? Uh, Green Bay 863 Division. He was, he was approved to live there in February of last year. Okay. Okay. okay, I just want to make sure I was just following yep. up on that. Get to the bottom here. Or right, is there any other questions for him? Uh, yes, do your grandparents know about your conviction? Yeah, they know everything. Uh, my grandparents visited me. Okay. They've been really strong emotional support through all this. And are you working right now? Yes, I'm a CNC operator at Odin, uh, what was it? Howard, I think it, Howard, yeah. And you've worked there how long? Um, oh, six months. <coughs> there was an opportunity from the last job. I had to take it. And what do you have your support system? You list um, Engelberts? Yes. How do my, you know them? They're my mother, uh, stepfather. They live six blocks from this potential residence. Okay. And Ashley Delvo? Also six blocks from the residence. That's my sister. Okay. Yeah. I have a lot of family in there. Okay. And what? who's Jim? Delvo? That, that would be my father. Okay. I'm not exactly sure where he lives, but he tends to be in Green Bay. Okay. Uh, 
any other questions for him? Anybody want to see his certificate of completeness? Okay. And no questions for me. Anybody want to make a motion? Go ahead. Okay. Motion to approve address specific um, 863 division, or excuse me, 100 Wilson Avenue, Green Bay. 1003? I'm sorry, 1003 Wilson Avenue, Green Bay. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to um, approve him at 1003. Okay, sir, you've been approved to uh, move to that location. Uh, do you want the uh, information sent to that location? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Drive safe. Uh, Christopher Klein. Yeah, I, I guess that question is because we, we changed the meeting time, is it, is it appropriate or should we grant him another 30 days? Well, um, I reached out to not only leave voicemails for everybody, but I also reached out to probation agents. Um, so probation agents confirmed that... He knew um, about it? I don't know if I specifically heard back from his probation agent, um, but all of the agents were forwarded the, the reschedule. Um, if you guys want to extend it for another 30 days, I can certainly add them to the, to the March agenda. Did he show up last time? Last week? Uh, last week. In the no, nobody, to the best of my knowledge, showed up. Okay. I'm going to make a motion to extend uh, to our next meeting uh, Christopher Klein's um, uh, location to 2420 Oakwood Drive move our, our our change in schedule has he already been approved to live there yeah for 120 days okay okay I have the wrong one all right second it okay Next up is Tejan Cleveland. Tejan. Tejan. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. Is it okay if I just call you Mr. Cleveland <laughs> <laughs> or Mr. Baseball? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, so the last time we saw you, yes, yeah, so I'm just trying to get back here. <coughs> Late 2015. Yep. Uh, so uh, tell us how things have been going. Uh, very well. I'm married now, um, acquired three kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a lead foreman at the construction job that I've had for over three years now. Um, I've completed just every aftercare that they could in Green Bay and also tutored the one while I was locked up in 2015. Did the SO4 program, for your uh, two year program at Oshkosh, and I tutored it for another four years after that. Um, I did 13 and a half years in prison. Three days after I was out, I was working construction. I haven't stopped or looked back ever since then. Um, I had a little bump in the road probably about six months or a year after I got out to where I got into a relationship that was unapproved by my agent, which now is my wife. Um, I ended up doing a RCI program. It was like, like uh, ATR, mm -hmm. we call it. And uh, worked through everything, went through the obstacles that I had to do to get everything legally 
approved from my PO, um, no contacts, no authentic phone conversations, um, passed a polygraph from my PO and everything that I've been following her rules. Um, just everything's, everything's going very well for me. Except for one thing. We're married, but we're not living together. <laughs> <laughs> I live over in Cormier. I have an apartment. She's got a house in West Mason. Okay. And we're trying to consolidate both of our mortgages, our rents and everything. So, and of course, we're married, so we want to live together. <laughs> well, I spent the first year and a half of my marriage apart, too, so <laughs> it's no fun. Yeah, you know, we're working on that. I have a question. Go ahead. The address you're requesting <coughs> to move to, I have as 324 15th Avenue? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's right up from West Mason. Okay. And it, will your wife be moving into that home as well? Also, okay. yes. Okay. And three kids. Uh, I don't have any other questions. Does anybody else have any questions for him? No. All right, I'm going to make a motion to <coughs> approve him to 324 15th Avenue address specific. Second that. No, if we get divorced, so it's because we're living together. <laughs> <laughs> I spent the first year and a half of my marriage apart, and we just celebrated our 27th. I waited 40 years to do it one time, so it's do or die. <laughs> Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, great. Have your information back, and good luck. You guys try to save them, or they're getting bad, too. Which address <laughs> do you want your confirmation set? Uh, send it to 1199. Okay. Yeah, because. And if not, it will be forwarded, right? <laughs> Thank yep. you. Mr. Uh, uh, Leo Sanchez. Okay, um, how's the last 90 days been going? We've granted you 90 days at your current address. Tell us what's been going on. Yeah, uh, everything's great. I ended up getting a job like the following week after I saw you guys last, and I was back in treatment the week after that. So I've been doing that since, and everything's going very well. How often are you in treatment? Once a week. Let's speak. And how long? How many sessions do you have to do? Uh, there's. It doesn't say how many sessions I have to do, like just whenever she recommends that I'm Done. That's what I'm done. Okay. Where are you currently working? Uh, general maintenance. For who? Uh, Vans Fire and Safety. Okay. Let me check one other thing here real quick. the current location, how's that working well for you? Uh, everything's going very well there. Uh, it's really a quiet neighborhood. There's not much going on outside. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions for him? Then I'll ask for a motion. One quick question. Who is, do you reside by yourself? Uh, no, I'm currently staying with my mom. Okay. Motion to, to grant, or to prevent the applicant to reside at? 154 one, Burger. Yeah, 154 Burger, address specific. Second that. <coughs> All right. <coughs> uh, we'll send the permanent address information to to that location, and good luck. All right. Thank you.
Uh, Ms. Tammy Bonfus. <coughs> Thank you. The last time you were here, the area in question was not within our area. And last time I was over phone, I was in the DOC um, still, and there was a confusion with that because it was my mom's address where I'm currently staying at. Right. Um, we had found out between my mom, my agent, and myself that it was actually not a restricted area. Right. So the, then it had gotten approved. Correct. So basically, you're looking to move to... On my own. <laughs> so my kids can get away from my mom. <laughs> That's not very nice to it's say. It's been a long... She's Mom's had a long happy. <laughs> Mom's, had a long Mom's long. Long. Yeah, I've had him for four years. Okay. All right, um, before we get started, I just want to make sure that uh, I can uh, look over your stuff or ask any questions related to your... Um, sure. Your um, uh, sexual offender training? Sure. Public? Okay, great. Where are you working currently, ma'am? I do not work. I'm disabled. I get oh. social security disability. Okay. So what do you do with your day? Um, right now, trying to find a place. Um, I'm wanting to get back into school or get at least a part-time job in between. Um, but my agent preferred me rather to wait to see if I get my own house before I take the next step so it's not too much on myself. Okay. So in terms of the, the place that you want to move to, um, in terms of being able to pay for that and pay for other expenses, are you going to be in good shape? Or yes, um, the rent there I think it was only four fifty, if I'm not mistaken. On my current income through Social Security disability, it's eight eight something. Okay. And the only thing that utilities included heat and water, or no heat heat and lights, but water I don't have to pay like thirty bucks towards water. Okay. Is CPS involved? No. I do have custody, um, not currently full custody. My mom's got temporary placement until I'm on my own and go through the courts. I still have full placement of my son, but he's residing with his father until I can get a place. In terms of, you said you get 800 and some dollars from Social Security and it's 400 for rent. It doesn't seem like, you know, $400 is enough to for a couple of kids and yourself to make it through a month. Well, um, I would be getting food, uh, food stamp aids as well. Um, my oldest daughter is working as well. She is willing to help with anything as well, if need be. Okay. Um, like I said, I just try, once I get there, um, into the place, that's like I said, I'm going to the next step as far as to continue as to get an appointment or enroll in school. So that way I can <coughs> further myself and provide for my kids. I was doing that prior to, um, to having my conviction. I was on disability. Um, paying for rent and doing everything. I had no, no hard times doing it. Um, never lost a place with them. I've always had my bills, everything caught up pretty much. Mom does help too once in a while if, if um, I'm struggling a little bit here and there. Okay. Any other questions for her? Um. How long have you been out? I just got out the 22nd of January. Okay. So I guess a, a question for me is, is okay. yeah. yeah, I mean, why did you do what you did? I was not thinking. Um, the guy I was dating, unfortunately, I was trying to please him, lack of judgment. Um, 
I had, prior to that, I had sent my son to live with his father. So I had my son, I raised him all my life. Um, he was with his father, and my judgment just was bad. It was poor. Um, I made wrong choices. So tried to please somebody, tried to do things that weren't right. I've learned from what I have done, take full responsibility for what I have done. Um, I've learned a lot. I've been, I felt their pain that they were in, that I caused the victims still to this day. How old were the victims? 17. And do you, do they live in the area? I have no clue. I have no contact with them. Okay. You list um, Faye Peters? Yes, yeah, she works um, through the Resource Community Center in Milwaukee. She is an advocate for um, like human trafficking and stuff. I admitted to a prison. So okay. um, I write her and I communicate with her. She is also trying to assist me as far as um, looking for employment, looking to further better myself. Um, I stay in contact with her quite often. Is she with, um, okay. Were you, if you don't, were you trafficked as well? No, I wasn't. Okay. I'm sorry. Any other questions? No questions. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll uh, make a motion to grant the appeal address specific to 427 South Roosevelt Street. Is there a second? Second. Ma'am, so where would you like that information sent? To that address, please. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you very much. Have this information back so you don't lose that. Thank you, guys. Yep. Our next meeting is uh, March 13th at 2.30 p.m. Okay. Oh, you're good. You're good. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, and so I just need a motion uh, to adjourn. So moved. Second. You guys are always so quick with that one. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, they were so quick, I didn't catch who made the motion. Is that Melissa? Huh. So, who are the two gentlemen up here, by the way? A long they were speedy. Please. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, they were different. Those was like. <laughs> yeah, they were runny. Um, I'm, I'm still waiting on Melissa's vote. It's all good. Something's happening with it. <laughs> Did you take an oral? Sure. Okay. Yeah. You're voting to yeah. adjourn? Uh, yes, I vote to adjourn. Okay. I don't know what happened. It went blank for a minute. And then I did vote.